Next up, we have uh, Joshua from New York. Hi, Joshua. You're a recent deconvert. Ooh, how recent? Can you hear us? Hello? Uh oh. Next. Well, I'm going to put him back. Yes, yes. Oh, Oh, there he is. (laughs) I forgot. I forgot. We We can hear you now. (laughs) Well, hi. Hi. So, yeah, I'm recently. Oh, I've been an atheist for about four or five years. Grew up Christian for the past 23 years. And my family is very religious. From my uncle, the pastor, to literally everyone in my family, just Christian. But it. Recently, you know, I stepped back from my religion. I thought, I started thinking on my own, like thinking that, wow, this is uh, this is all BS, like from Noah's Ark to just about everything that you can think of in the Bible. Right. It's very, me personally, I thought the Bible is very hateful, mm-hmm. especially when it comes to um, non traditional relationships. I'm very, I'm not gay myself, but I'm, I grew up in an area where I accept everyone. Like, I think love is love to so make a difference if you're gay, bisexual, whatever. And then to be told, no, that's an abomination, yada, yada, yada. It's like those who just come, it wasn't moral for me. Right. And the reason why I called today was the fact that I know you guys told us multiple times, but just being around my family and talking to my family because I, I, Person had some health issues in the past where I was born with a rare a disease called peri bumber syndrome, hmm. where my face hasn't, it's not asymmetrical, so I had surgeries in the past. Okay. And people told me, oh, this is this is God's way of showing you the light. Yada, yada, oh, yada. I thinking. hate that. Yes, that's very annoying. God. I'm like, if God really, like, I personally don't think this is something a loving God would do. I had about seven surgeries. I almost died once during one. Oh, I'm sorry. And for people to tell me that, you know, this is God's will, God's will for me to learn better, isn't, it really didn't suit me right. And so I'm, 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 I'm a little bit everywhere. But it really, I just need, really like, assistance, like, dealing with situations with my family where, you know, where they get all religious and then I'm the only one in the corner and I don't want to be, like, pointed out how to deal with those situations. Well, there's a there's a bunch of strategies. Uh, one, one way is to agree to disagree. Uh, one way is just to, you know, subvert, subvert your beliefs and, and let, them, let them railroad you. That would be another way to go, but I wouldn't recommend it. Um, you may need to distance yourself. You may need to set boundaries. Um, I'd ask them to stop. And if they don't, then I'd set boundaries. And that's what I've done because, well, nobody's harassed me yet. <laughs> But. Okay. <laughs> okay. But yeah, that sounds. You know, it's it's okay to say I don't believe that. Uh, can right. we talk about something else? Um, don't say that to me anymore. I don't believe in that. Right. Please, if you care about me at all, you'll respect my. You'll respect that. Another more subtle bit of advice is that sometimes when you're a new atheist, uh, that becomes disproportionately important. Yeah. And. Um, with you, when you're with family, you may want to focus more on the things that you have in common, the mm-hmm. shared beliefs, the shared stories, the Games. love, the love of each other, and 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 you know, grandma and these sorts of things, um, and and you know, maybe steer the subject away from religion if you can. Um, okay. And it, I, so, I, I'm not quite sure where you are in your coming out process. Maybe we should have asked that first. Um, I, um. I completely, you know, abandon my religion. Completely, like, don't. Well, I can't say completely. I'm 99.99 percent. It's like because right. yeah. about three years ago, my brother was unfortunately murdered, and a part of me wants to believe that he's in a better place, or it's like he's like at peace. Oh, hey, it. he's alive in your I memories, though. Yeah. When I, get I it. when I think about stuff like that, I, I hope that maybe I mean you can keep him alive in your memories. Remember good yeah. stuff. Get with people who misses that person too, and talk about the things that you loved about that person. Is that is that reasonable? Mm-hmm. Do you think that's a good thing? Well, sure, sure. But I can understand holding on to the belief in the afterlife um, as as maybe the last vestige. Yeah. 
um, it's certainly a very appealing and comforting sort of belief, right? Yeah. It's understandable. Yeah, I, but where are you I, at I, with I, your I, family? Um, only one person knows. That's my closest cousin. Ooh. Okay. Um, oh, so he's not out I, I, yet. So, is, so what's the driving force here? Are you, are you feeling like you're lying to them and you want to come out and tell them? Or are you, are you just frustrated with the sort of conversations that you're having? I think I'm more frustrated with the conversations for the fact that, you know, I, I every time we have a conversation, something happens, you know, like, oh, um, like, maybe like something like that, they really can't understand. So they're one of those people like, oh, I don't understand it. So it has to be God. Right. And I'm saying they're like, but there's scientific facts on it. But, oh, I can't read that. I really don't understand the, the text of it. Mm -hmm. So that must be fake. So it has to be God. It has to be God no matter what. And it, it just gets frustrating when, we start talking about things. I bring up scientific facts, and they just completely dismiss it and say, "Well, the Bible was here before this all this stuff, so mm -hmm. I have to be fake and God." And all. It, it, it's frustrating after a while. It, it sounds like you're not going to change them, and and going into this this sort of uh, type of conversation with your family, where you think you're going to change their beliefs, that's a tall order. Um, I would I would strive for maybe them respecting your position. That would that's a reasonable thing to hope for and mm -hmm. and desire. And it may be that you just need a larger community of people where you can be yourself and and talk about these frustrating things and and what your what your beliefs actually are and you know scientific topics and these sorts of things. Do you do you have a, a community of atheists near you somewhere? Um, I am. The only atheist that I know of. Okay. I, I recently on Facebook found uh, black non-believers of New York. Oh, cool! There are a lot of groups like awesome. that. Awesome, awesome. I would I would highly recommend to reach out to one or more groups. Uh, you're in the New York area. My goodness, there's there's bound to be you know twenty or thirty different <laughs> groups up there. Um, yeah. You know, look there's look, our on, groups. look and meet up. Um, that's mm -hmm. it's a that's a place to look. Um, even, you know, look for skeptics in the pub, look for things, uh, free thinker, humanist, non-believer. What's our discord? Free thought. I don't know our discord, but uh, um, they'll put it, up, they'll put it up on the, the screen. So there, and there are online communities, but, um, you know, I think it's personally better to, to make friends in person. Okay. But the online communities, <laughs> uh, if you have, if you, uh, the listener, are, are isolated, uh, that's that's another alternative. The online com com communities helped me because I'm I'm an introvert and I quit drinking, so I can't really go out. I, I don't go out much anymore. Okay. Um, so the yeah, online I'm stuff totally helped me. Introvert. You're an introvert as well? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's, you know, you can kind of hide in your room and your blanket and your pillows and... <laughs> How'd you yeah, get here? <laughs> And so, you know, eventually you get, you get dragged out the house and forced to, you know, <laughs> yeah. be around people. Awesome. All right. Well, um, well you guys have a great help. You know, this is especially being an atheist and surrounded by Christians to talk to people who understand you. Yeah. Well, try to remember when you're talking to these people and you're getting frustrated that you believed that stuff, too. Yeah, that's time. what makes me a little bit more patient because I'm like, hey, I, w I mean, I was all in. Yeah. So anytime I meet somebody that's crazy, I'm like, I get you. <laughs> the, the 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 danger though is to to think that you'll just say the one magic thing and and change their mind, and, right. and that's generally not the case. Right. Yep. There was one magic thing that changed my mind, but it's probably not going to be the magic thing that changes yours. So you are not the only atheist. There, there's tons oh. of tons of atheists out there, and and uh, reach out and and you know meet them. Um, okay, I'll, I'll definitely, I'll definitely look out for people. Okay, an online community we have is is uh, the ACA Discord. It's a tiny tiny dot cc slash ACA Discord, all lowercase. You can go there online, and I'm sure they'll post oh. it somewhere in the yeah, video. Yeah, and there there's a you know about atheism. Uh, there's all sorts of online communities. Any anyway. loss of philosophical discussions, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, different shows. Well, Joshua, we're going to let you go. Thank you. Thank you for your call. Thank okay. you for calling, Joshua. Thank you for your time. All Good right. Good luck. Bye-bye.